We begin with our chief national correspondent, Matt Gutman, with the excruciating scenes playing out in those southern villages and how this conflict has unified what was once a very divided country. Israel at war after the deadliest attack on the Jewish people since the Holocaust. The conflict now shifting from the ground to the air as we journey from town to town across Israel's war-ravaged south, the horrific death toll is mounting. The elderly, women, children, soldiers, no one spared from Hamas's brutality. And as hundreds of thousands of Israelis get called up to fight, for these southern Israeli towns and villages, the sheer terror of war is everywhere. Our team was caught in the middle in Ashkelon, just a few miles north of Gaza. Above us, you can see so many streaks of smoke crisscrossing the sky. Massive bomb This is a massive bombardment. We're hearing glass break. I think that's from these are pieces from the rockets that are actually falling from the sky right now. Those are the shreds from the intercepts or the rockets that blew them up, and you can hear them tinkling down as they begin to drop all over. I've never heard that before. You hear all that tinkling? Yeah. That's pieces of metal falling from the sky from the exploding interceptors and I guess the rockets that they've hit. We scrambled to put on our flak jackets. Just a few hundred yards away, we find the aftermath of a Hamas rocket. This is what people go through here every single day. This is why this town is a ghost town. Everything in Israel is a ghost town because of that. It has been incessant. We run to a bomb shelter nearby where we find terrified families huddled in the darkness. She's saying, we're okay to tolerate this. There, as long as there is no Hamas, there's no Hezbollah. Um, she said that there are disabled people upstairs that can't get down. It is very hot and stifling in here, she says. And this is the only light they have. They come as Manatan Paul. Jimmy Salim. She said from Saturday, they're here pretty much the entire time. Finally, we meet the former head of security for the town. Good to see you. Hi. They lost every shade of human humanity. They, they, even animals don't do that. In the eyes of the Israelis, it shattered every option, every possibility that we had for a normal life near this identity. Now we understand as a country that if we want to exist, there is no place for Hamas. We are not saying Gaza. We don't aim, Israelis never aim to annihilation of people, but definitely we have to erase Hamas. These are parts that actually fell into your garden? Yeah. You guys sleep in, in the bomb shelter right now? Yes, that's true. Yeah, well, I'm trying to, you know, a lot of kids in my age are very scared, but I'm trying to keep it cool down. Wow. I don't think it's right that a 15 years old and even kids even younger than me see it as a regular living. They, they go outside and search for parts of the bombs. It's not normal. Ch kids don't have to live like this. The unspeakable horrors becoming clearer as soldiers and the world learn what happened here Saturday. This is the town of Kfar Aza. Um, there are military jeeps, tanks everywhere. We understand that there were dozens and dozens of people killed here. There may still be bodies out in this town right now. The military only now able to see the full extent of the horror that unfolded in this leafy kibbutz, home to so many young families. You see the babies, the mother, the fathers in the bedrooms, in the protection rooms, and how 
the terrorists kill them, it's not a war, it's not a battlefield. It's a massacre. We are with the soldiers as they go door to door, bringing out the murder. It's the uh, incredibly grim task that these soldiers have of uh, wrapping up a body right in that room. Zipping up the body bag, and then we hear soldiers praying. Israel forming an emergency wartime government, and Prime Minister Netanyahu urging unity in a national address. But a matter of weeks ago, this country was more divided than ever. Netanyahu's judicial overhaul plan plunged Israel into nine months of demonstrations, the largest and longest protest movement in the country's 75-year history, exposing bitter divisions in society along the way. The move to weaken the Supreme Court's power was seen as a power grab by Netanyahu's far-right government as it removed the ability for judges to strike down unreasonable decisions. Israelis fear everything from the protection of civil rights, minority rights, the freedom of the press and secular education is at risk. And that the changes to the judiciary are meant to benefit Netanyahu, who's facing a corruption trial. His far-right party not pushing a two-state solution or any compromise in the West Bank. Israel bulldozing Palestinian villages there this year. And the area has seen the highest number of Palestinians killed by Israel in nearly two decades. Gaza, on the other hand, not drawing as much of the government's focus. And there are questions about warning signs that may have been missed along the way. So what comes next for this nation, born after the unspeakable atrocities of the Nazis, founded as a place of hope for the Jewish people? The national anthem, Hatikva, meaning the hope, sung far and wide these past few days, including in this bomb shelter in Tel Aviv. In part, it translates as, as long as within our hearts the Jewish soul sings, our hope is not yet lost. And back in that other bomb shelter, a sense of resolve through the overwhelming grief as a united Israel barrels towards an uncertain future. She wants to be evacuated as quickly as Gamle Elat. She wants to be evacuated from here all the way to Israel South. It was very, very difficult. It is no way to live. Our, our chief national correspondent, Matt Gutman, joins us now. Matt, thank you so much for your in-depth report. Uh, you've spent so much time reporting in Israel over the years. Do you feel like this is as unified as you've ever seen this country in some time? Definitely, Lindsay. Um, there is near unanimity in Israel that Hamas needs to be destroyed, and not just militarily, but the entire political organization as well. And I've never seen Israelis come together in this way in the 20-some years that I've been covering this. But it is temporary. Once this war or conflict is over, there is going to be a reckoning. People are go going to want to know why so many warning signs were missed, how the intelligence was in the dark about what Hamas had been planning for many months and how the military failed to respond quickly enough and how the political echelon, including Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, led them down this path. That reckoning will eventually happen, Lindsay. Yeah, it will ultimately. And interesting to see that unity right behind you flashing between the American flag and Israeli flag. Matt Gutman, once again for us, reporting from Tel Aviv. Thanks so much, Matt. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.